morning. I cannot sleep, especially after hearing what I just heard. You guys have got to hear this. Please watch this full video. To begin, could, could you give people just a little background of your history with FEMA? Because you work for FEMA, you know how they work. Tell us a little bit about yourself for our new listeners. I started as a volunteer and I worked my way up the, up the ladder. And then did, did you eventually then work in a FEMA office? and oh, yeah. take yeah. on various roles and what 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 all did you end up doing in people much my specialty was planning my i if my shame was starting to put the information and the templates together that would later become the databases that we're all fighting right now and was it in this process then that you began to see some nefarious agenda behind fema or what what alerted you to things that you didn't expect to see Oh, actually, when I went to work for them, I was awake. My dad worked for Naval Warfare, and when I was five years old, he looked me in the eye, and he said, this is going to happen on your watch. You need to prepare. And so I've known and I've prepared since I was five. And actually, when I was at FEMA, I was actually a source of Steve Quayles, and I was getting him information of what was going on in the inside. So the real agenda, if people go to the World Economic Forum, uh, it, that's held in Davos, they can see this big graphic. And if you click on the COVID-19, there's like this, a spike. It looks like the spike coronavirus. And on each spike is a different disruption of all of society. So what, basically the plan was for, to bring the whole world to a standstill and then inject global governance under the cover of COVID-19. This plan what is well the first time i discovered it um in january was 200 layers deep it is now 250 layers deep and what you think those plans entail i mean are, is this a is this a depopulation event or are, are they just trying to centralize control but keep everybody alive and productive or are they really trying to ultimately commit genocide so it's interesting that you ask that because I'm taking a series of military uh, course uh, classes, let's say, and I just did a special report today. So basically with the COVID, we saw the first round of disruption and it will end with disabling probably 90% of the population. And, but the goal, the ultimate goal is depopulation. When you say uh, disability, you've, you've mentioned that term twice so far. I'd like you to speak more about this disability. And it, it brings up the fact that we know now documented that this Wuhan coronavirus attacks neurology. And I know people, I know people personally who have lost their sense of smell permanently. Some people lost their sense of hearing. Some people are suffering brain damage. So is part of the disability an actual kind of neurological lobotomy to where people can't even process anymore they can't even think to resist is that part of it yeah so it is a biological chemical neuro weapon and i will be i just filmed a um breaking news story giving the evidence of that uh, with clips from the people that head that up in their own words is that something you're releasing as a video or how, how could people see that Yes, it will be on my Patreon site. I'm going to make it public on YouTube, and I will also be putting the transcript so that people can have that and share with their friends and their family. I would assume it will be up sometime later today. Give us a description of what this is going to look like as the food supply creators are, are everyday Americans. I mean, remember with the thousands of cars lining up for the food banks back in March and April? Are we going to have like massive refugees of millions of Americans streaming into the FEMA camps voluntarily to say, feed me and I'll agree to whatever? Is that what it's going to look like? Or, I mean, you tell me, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth here. So basically, there were several object objectives after Hurricane Katrina. And one of those was a bill that was spawned after Hurricane Katrina to establish um, public reception centers at your local Walmart 
or whatever large facility. It could be Costco, whatever. And it was set up in case of a nuclear event, but it could be any disaster. It could be a pathogen. It could be an earthquake. It could be a hurricane. We're already conditioned to do that. Like it will be a brainstem reaction that when this happens, uh, the next wave uh, hits that people will be starving. The food supply is going down. The UN just put out a report that they wanted to sell food by the one one thousandth of a calorie. And DARPA, which is the black op military uh, sector, wants to sell food by the molecule. So after this next lockdown that we are expecting, I would say within probably eight weeks, your food supply is going to evaporate and they want to change your behavior and they're right now you've got a little bit of freedom uh get what food supplies you can get what seeds you can because what you have when you go into that lockdown is what you're going to be having unless you completely kowtow to the global agenda and how is it my question to you though uh, celeste is how, how does fema run that whole idea of hey, we're here to help you. If you want food, come on in and consent to this FEMA camp. How does, how does that exchange actually work? How do they run that on the streets? So you would go to the public reception center, then you would be, that's where you would be processed. Um, it's going to be different than the concentration camps of World War II because we basically are in an automated technocracy uh, they have synthetic they, they've got synthetic beans they have uh, robotics they really don't need a large population base so one of the reasons that I left the agencies is they have this this plan that if you do not believe that the government is God, um, then you would go to one of these processing centers briefly. If you could be re-educated, they would do that. Although there isn't much need for humans, that you know, the globalists really are free to admit that there's no room for humans anymore. Um, it's our duty to uh, expire so that um, to make the planet to atone for our sins, basically, of what we've done to the planet. And so you will basically be killed. And there are two different humane methods of killing. And one of those is gassing. And the other method is decapitation. And they've been doing all these experiments, decapitating thousands and thousands of mice, recording their brain waves, all of that, to justify decapitation as a uh, humane method of euthanizing people. You're talking about guillotine. Guillotine, yes. And if you think that there's no evidence, so back in between 2000 and 2005, I collected a lot of military documents, like such as, because they were really studying the issue of guillotines and how to build a better guillotine, this type of thing. So I have those documents.